Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. When you're ready to pop the question, the last thing you want to do is second guess the ring. At BlueNile.com, you can design a one-of-a-kind ring with the ease and convenience of shopping online. Choose your diamond and setting. When you find the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Go to BlueNile.com and use promo code SPOTIFY to get $50 off your purchase of $500 or more. That's code SPOTIFY at BlueNile.com for $50 off your purchase. BlueNile.com, code SPOTIFY. Hello, welcome to Sports by Northwest from the Oregonian and Oregon Live. I am Bill Orem. Sports by Northwest, supported by the BitNile.com Grand Prix of Portland, coming September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd to Portland International Raceway. Really big things going down in the world of sports here in Oregon, in the Northwest, specifically Oregon and Washington off to the Big Ten. Oregon State and Washington State still without clarity. To break that down, I'm joined this week by Nick Daschel, the Oregon State beat writer for the Oregonian and Oregon Live. Nick, how's it going down there? It's just going great, Bill. Nick, I, I, I've got to wonder. I've got to wonder just off the bat, how are Beaver fans handling the news of the last week with the rival Ducks uh, getting a lifeline from the Big Ten as the Pac-12 crumbles, and and the Beavers really kind of waiting, waiting to see what what what's next for them. Well, as you might expect, not well. Um, you know, there's there, there's a good portion of them that think the Ducks pulled a fast one on them, and I, I can't blame them, really. It's, you know, o- o- Oregon State is, you know, a little bit dependent on, on Oregon when it comes to the Pac-12 these days. They're, the Oregon just happens to be able to be the school that is able to pull the levers, and Oregon State has, I mean, virtually no cards to play. So when Oregon pulled out, it, it left Oregon State in a – you know, a pretty bad spot and fans aren't just not reacting well to it. And I don't know, you know, I don't know how soon they will react in, in a different manner until things are solved, which could be this week, could be a month from now. It, it, it's, it's just hard to say with everything that's up in the air. Nick, I mean, this is something I think that when people started doomsday scenario, scenario ing the Pac-12 and its demise potentially when USC and UCLA left. I think this is something a lot of people sort of anticipated. If the Big Ten continued to poach from the Pac-12, Oregon and Washington were likely targets. And for all the reasons you kind of outlined, you know, Oregon State was not likely to get an invitation to the Big Ten along with Oregon. So there was a concern that, you know, these that these schools would be separated for really the first time in their history. And it's something I spoke with Rich Brooks about last summer and then again a couple of days ago that column's up on Oregon Live now but do you do you, when you look at the available options for Oregon State and we don't necessarily know what all the options are or where those stand but you know over the last 4 days or so we're we're talking on Monday you know this all went down on Friday you've heard reports that the Big 12 could expand again uh reports that the um Mountain West uh, and the Pac-12 could merge, that the Pac-12 might want to cobble together some version of a conference built around Oregon State, Washington State, and Stanford and Cal, um, that Oregon State and Washington State could end up in the American. Um, as you look at kind of that litany of possibilities, is there one that seems most plausible to you? And are there any you just throw out, of, you just throw out and say that's not realistic? Well, the, the 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 scenario that would be of would be most useful to Oregon State is that they could keep the Pac-12 together somehow, and that would mean Cal and Stanford are on board, Washington State's on board, and then they go out and get at least four more teams: San Diego State, Colorado State, uh, UNLV, SMU, Tulane, Rice. You know those schools 
that that and, and if they could get at least eight they they try to keep the a5 status which gives them an automatic bid to the cfp i don't know how long that might last but you know the all the, the best case scenario is keeping the pac-12 together getting apple and somebody else on board as a tv partner keeping the a5 and you know that 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 would that would be it's not what they have now but it, w- it would be the best case you know there's some long shot stuff out there i know you know stanford and cal supposedly are talking to the acc which just seems incredibly ridiculous but I mean, can you imagine being Stanford and Cal in an in an ACC where everybody is three thousand miles away away from you? Yet they're talking about it like, you know, it might be a possibility. And I'm thinking, if the ACC did something like that, I mean, you almost have to have Oregon State and Washington State go with you because the travel would just be a killer for Stanford and Cal. I don't know yeah, how much I'm- of a possible that is i was just gonna say Um, i mean the big the big 10 kind of broke down the door of regionality really not mattering right when it added usc and ucla like everything else has been at least somewhat gradual you know Rutgers was a little far flung from the big 10 but hey you know they had penn state and that's a neighboring state to Rutgers, so you can sort of see it you know usc and ucla completely reinvented the the system almost and so it just seems like the things that we traditionally value about college athletics regionality tradition but also it being a a vehicle for education you know it's not all football it's not all high level division one basketball and i'm you know i'm certainly far from the first person to point this out so i don't mean to bore our listeners but the idea that stanford and cal could be sending you know their olympic sports uh athletes their non-revenue athletes their you know, they're, they're, they're track and field athletes, whatever you have, what have you, you know, I'm looking at the ACC right now. What's the farthest West ACC school? Is it Pitt? Like the university of Miami, Pittsburgh? wouldn't it? Or, 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 um, or Notre oh, Dame? My. The Western most. Did I say, yeah, the, the East, the Western most. Oh, oh for, for this West. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be, yeah, it would be Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Right. Right. West. Which is, um, but I mean, the majority of them are on the seaboard and, and Eastern seaboard and, or, close to it uh, yeah there would be a yeah pits pits even a you know is pretty darn far away so yeah that just doesn't make any sense and then you know there's there's talk of the big 12 i i i i think right now they're they're looking at adding two more teams if they can get the tv piece on board they're really interested in san diego state i'm hearing I, I don't know. That one seems a little, that one seems out there, but that's a possibility. The most likely scenario is some, is some merger with the mountain West. And that's where the money, that, and that's where the money falls off the map. Now the, can the you interesting that? part like, of I, this. I, I, can you explain that for our listeners? Just kind of why the money is so much better to stay in the PAC 12 versus being absorbed by the mountain West. Well, sure. I mean, the media rights for the Pac-12 would have been somewhere in the twenty-five to thirty million dollar range a year. The, the Mountain West is about five, so I mean that's a that's a twenty to twenty-five million dollar haircut. Plus, the postseason stuff isn't what the Pac-12 has. Um, there's no guarantee to the CFP. Um, it's just, it, 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 and if you go through the budgets of the Mountain West, the, the the highest one that I found was San Diego State at sixty five million. Well, Oregon State's at ninety five this year, and they're one of the lowest ones in the Pac twelve. So, you know, going to the Mountain West means paring back your athletic department, paring back a lot of stuff, saying goodbye to to probably your co- football coaching staff because you're not going to be able to pay you know, the, the kind of money that, that you're not going to be able <clears throat> to pay $10 million to a coaching staff anymore. Uh, basketball, I don't know, you know, that's going to get scaled back. I mean, they're on the hook for all these contracts. Sure. But, but going forward, they're going to have to figure out how to, how to take care of them. I, I don't know how you, I, I don't know what they do with the mountain West. They got to figure it out to where they can, they can package it, make it, you know, 
somewhat palatable TV and maybe squeeze another three to four million, get maybe get up to ten million somehow. But I don't know how you do that. Um, yeah, I mean. I just think there's so much stuff out there that we just haven't even heard. I mean, don't you think the the these schools that are going to the Big Ten, Oregon, Washington, they're, they're I gotta believe they're out. Their Olympic sport athletes are just gonna are just gonna be outraged about about the travel and all that stuff. And football of all the sports, football is the least affected by the travel. Right. They're just it's it's not it's it's easy for football. The rest of them, it's a I mean, let's face it. It's a pain in the ass. It's just going to be, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. You're flying commercial. You're subject to the whims of, you know, the United Airlines uh, <laughs> flight schedule. You are, um, I, I just, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's, it's one of the many ways in which college sports have lost their way where the, the athlete experience outside of football and to a lesser degree basketball is, the student athlete experience is, is not, a, it's not a consideration at all. And especially when you're, these are the athletes who are not getting the same slice of NIL that, you know, the, their football counterparts are, you know, yes, there's right. scholarship money and, and, you know, those are athletes who, you know, are in college for the education, but it, it, the, the, I mean, the, I mean, the, the tail wagging the dog here is, is uh, pretty, pretty significant. Yeah. And so again, I, Oregon state's got a lot to figure out and there's still some options, out. but I guess what I was going to, I forgot what I was going to get to is if Stanford and Cal happen to leave Oregon state and Washington state would actually be in control of the PAC 12 at that point, which means they're in control of the media rights pot of money, the postseason stuff. And I, they don't get all of it, but they can, but, but there's a possibility they can claim some significant damages that the, the departing teams have, have, you know, have wounded them and they can, and they can claim and they can get a, a sizable pot of that, a slice of that $420 million that's coming right. this year between media rights and, and basketball uh, postseason revenue and other, and other postseason revenues. Um, now, uh, it'll get litigated for sure, but Oregon State, but but they, but but they, but there's a possibility they're going to get a bunch of money out of this at some point. It's funny to hear you say, uh, you know, get the Pac-12 to stick together when you know eight teams have departed so far. But what you mean is the institution of the Pac-12, right? The the the, the body of the Pac-12. The teams are gone, the schools are gone, but the institution can still exist, and it could theoretically rebuild around Oregon State and Washington State. And potentially Stanford. Well, I mean, when it comes Stanford to dis- when it comes to making de- when it comes to making decisions in the Pac-12 this year, whatever decisions need to be made, the only the only schools with a seat at the table are Stanford, Cal, Oregon State, and Washington State at this point. And if Cal and Stanford yeah. some somehow leave, you know, that would leave Washington State and Oregon State in control of of, of things. Um, well, yeah, Maybe, I mean, that's why don't Oregon state and Washington state have more appeal in realignment? Well, they're the small, I mean, they're, they're the, you know, the two smallest cities in, in the, in the PAC 12, they don't have a, they don't have a brand. They don't, they don't have a big TV market. I mean, Oregon state's in the technically in the Portland market, but you know, not really. And Washington state's technically in the Seattle market, but definitely not really. Um, You know, they just don't have, they don't have history and brand and, and, you know, they don't have Oregon's cool. They don't have, you know, the Bay area's eyeballs. They don't have Arizona's basketball program, you know, Arizona States, you know, big, big market. Utah's got, you know, a, a, a decent sized TV market. Plus they got a, a football program that's, that's, that's been rolling for quite a while. And, yeah, I mean it's just they they're not very attractive and they and their TV numbers have kind of proven that over the years. You mentioned the 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 coaching staff situation and Jonathan Smith makes you know I think north of 6 million dollars or close to it. Um if you look at the Mountain he's West a, he's, he's 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 got he's getting 30.6 million over the next 6 years, so it's about 5 million a year. Okay. 
you look at the Mountain West Conference and, you know, the standard salary for a head coach in the Mountain West is $1.4, $1.2 million. Um, I, I just, I guess I just don't even really quite understand what happens in that scenario. If Oregon State goes in and all of a sudden the coaching salaries are taking up, you know, 20, 25% of a, of an athletic budget or a little bit less than that, but you know, 15 to 20%, how do you even run the rest of the department? If Jonathan Smith's salary is, you know, was obviously negotiated under a different budget and a different expected revenue. How do you, how do you resolve that? Well, the, my guess is Jonathan would probably leave and they would, and they would be, off the hook for that money. I mean, at some point, you know, if things got to that situation, where they went to the mountain West, they started losing players. He'd started losing coaches. Couldn't get the right coaches he wanted. Uh, I'm I'm guessing he would probably leave. You know, if they have another big season this year, he's going to be in huge demand. Um, So he could easily move to another job and gets paid as much as he's making or more. So, and that's, I mean, it's sad. I mean, they built this program up to be like this and, and then, you know, out of nowhere, this comes and it's by no fault of Oregon States, you know, they, what they've built could just get toppled. Um, But I mean, it's not over yet. I mean, I don't, I don't want to leave Oregon State fans this idea that, you know, they're doomed. There's still, there's still some stuff out there that that could get worked out, but, but I don't know. I would say it's probably, I don't know, third and third and goal from the 15, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not impossible. It's not third. It's not fourth and goal from the 30. It's, but it's not, it's not, they're, they're not, they're not sitting at their second goal from the five in this situation. They're, you know, they, 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 they need some stuff. They need, they need some luck. They'll need some luck somewhere along the way. You know, uh, Nick, one thing that um, I, you know, I keep coming back to, and you know, I think a lot of people are, is the future of the dynamic between Oregon state and Oregon. And we heard Dan Lanning and Rob Mullen say last week that they absolutely want to keep playing Oregon State. Dan Dan Lanning said wants to play Oregon State home and home into perpetuity. Uh, there's some logistical hurdles there, but just as a principle, what do you think the appetite at Oregon State for continuing to play Oregon is going to be? Well, once the emotions, you know, cool off a little bit. I think I, I think you got to try to play Oregon in most of the sports. It's just it's just too it's too easy, too inexpensive not to play Oregon in basketball, in baseball, and you know whatever women's basketball, volleyball, soccer, football is really the only sport that's going to be a challenge because of the non-conference schedules. Because of I don't know what Oregon's appetite will actually be for wanting to schedule home and home games. Because if Oregon comes to Oregon state and says, Hey, we'll play you, but you're only going to play at Autzen. I mean, that's the, it'll, that's a deal breaker. There's no way Oregon state will do that. They just won't unless they're so desperate for money and Oregon paid them, you know, two and a half, $3 million or something like that to play. Um, I, the, the football one's going to be difficult, but I think all the other sports they got to try because it's it's mm-hmm. just too lucrative and too inexpensive to to put on a game like that in most of the other sports. But I, I think the fans will eventually get over the fact that you know Oregon is in the Big Ten and Oregon State is is in the Northwest Community College League or whatever. I don't know. I'm just kidding, but whatever whatever league that they're in, I, I think they'll eventually get over that. And, but I mean, there is the other. There is the other thing about, you know, the fans are all concerned that, you know, Oregon's got this gigantic budget and Oregon State will have a much smaller budget. How do you compete? I think that shows up in football, but I'm not sure it's, I'm not sure it will be a huge factor in all the other sports, in, you know, in, in a game, in a one game situation. Yeah, I am with you, Nick. And I, 
you know, I just am pretty cynical about the future and skeptical, I guess, about the future of Oregon and Oregon State in football. The number of people who have said, oh, look at all the schools that play, you know, Iowa and Iowa State play, Colorado and Colorado State play. Um, you know, there's plenty of examples. Well, yeah, but Texas and Texas A&M stopped playing um, and Colorado and Colorado State play because it was mandated by the legislature. And I think that you could argue it from both Oregon and Oregon State's side that it is not beneficial to play the game. You know, if you're Oregon, there's really, it's all downside, right? You can't lose to Oregon State again if you're Oregon. You're in the Big Ten now. You have the resources. You have the the recruiting advantage. It only hurts you to play Oregon State because if you win, you're supposed to win. And if you lose, something's wrong. And if you're Oregon right. State, you know, if you're Oregon State, you're still a Division One team trying to find your way to, you know, a prominent place at the end of the season. Um, and I don't know that you want to sign up to play a Big Ten team every single year on your non-conference schedule and for it to be the same Big Ten team every single year. So, you know, maybe that's just part of the the consequence of this move and, and both sides need to sort of accept the realities. But if they're not forced to do it, you know, we've seen what we've learned from realignment, Nick, is that these universities will act out of self-interest. And I don't see how playing football against each other when once the once the balance of power gets so completely skewed i don't really see how it's in the the interest of either school to play it unless the, unless the legislature intervenes and says you got to play it um but i don't think the legislature i mean the legislature technically has that power but i think that i think oregon the university of oregon is a more powerful body especially when you talk about oregon football is a more powerful body than the Oregon legislature, especially if Phil Knight's getting involved. So I'm just, I'm just really cynical about it. And you know, the number of people who've emailed me that I'm a lunatic and you know, the people who've been on Twitter and saying, of course they can still schedule a non-conference game. Why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they schedule a non-conference game? Well, it's just not, uh, it just doesn't seem to me like something Oregon is going to want to do, you know, march into Corvallis every other year. Like, why would you do that to yourself? I mean, you, you're not you're not going to play the patsies you've lined up in past years now that you're in the Big Ten, but you still want to put yourself in a position to be in the CFP out of the Big Ten. And I think Oregon's going to have a little bit of a come up, come, excuse me, a comeuppance, you know, in the new conference. I think it's going to take them some time to find their footing. But I just don't know why. And, and listen, I've looked at the schedules and I know there's a lot of moving pieces with what might need to happen with non-conference schedules once all this realignment takes place. And that's why part of why USC and UCLA, by the way, you know, they made their move two years in advance, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, a couple years in advance, you know, all of a sudden you've got a bunch of teams that are changing conferences on a, you know, 11 month countdown, basically a lot has to happen on the scheduling front. If anything's going to happen, but Oregon starts next year with Eastern Washington and Oregon state has Portland state. Okay. You could convince me that they could buy out those FCS teams and play each other. Does Oregon really want its first game of the Big Ten era to be against Oregon State? And I mean, in if you Corval- were true to the in Corvallis, if, right? If you're being true to the home and home thing, it would be in Corvallis, which, <laughs> if I'm Dan Lanning, is a terrible trap. Why would you? Why would you do that to yourself? And I just think that that's going to be kind of what ends up driving these decisions going forward. It's going to be a hard game to schedule in the first few years because you've got those dates committed already. And that is just, you know, sets off a whole chain of events in terms of, you know, other teams commitments and opponents being already tied up with their own schedule. So I just, I just think that we're going to get a rude awakening about, I mean, yeah, sure. Dan Lanning can say, Oh, I'd love to play Oregon state. I want to play Oregon state. It's important. But when the rubber meets the road, how real, how easy is it to actually get them on the schedule and how realistic is it that, you know, anybody's going to really want to do it. Well, and then you look at Oregon State, and and let's just say they end up in the mount with a Mountain West, you know, conference. There, there's going to be realignment again in five years. For Oregon State, you want to look as relevant as as you mm. possibly can over these five years. So, just in case there's an opening to get into one of these Power Five, re, you know, rejoin one of these Power Four or Five conferences, you know, you you might do that. So, the best way to do that is not lose non-conference games. So Mm -hmm. you don't really want to schedule more than one, you know, difficult 
non-conference game and they've already got a bunch of those scheduled so sure they have Oklahoma State coming Oregon up. State's, they have Oregon State's yep. re- only path really to getting back into a Power Five if they don't get into one this time is to keep winning 10, 11 games. So they look like, well, we're we're a little bit bigger than the Mountain West. You know, we're bigger, we're we're a bigger deal than the Mountain West, and you know, you ought to bring us on and things like that. You know, if they get back to being six and six, I mean, they're 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 going to be so irrelevant. Nobody's going to look at them again. So. I don't know. I'm. I mean, I'm. Obviously, we're both just speculating all this stuff because there's just so much stuff that right is going to happen here. That, but Nick, the, the Yahoo Sports had a column from the great Dan Wetzel uh, over the weekend or on Friday, maybe. Um, Dan Wetzel is one of the great, great American sports columnists, and his takeaway from you know Freaky Friday of realignment was that everybody in the country who is sick of realignment and and, and tired of seeing the bottom line um, be the bottom line should rally behind the Oregon State Beavers, that they are the face of what is wrong with college football from, from, the, from the flip side because they've been so badly wronged by, by this. So you should really be rooting for Oregon State to win the whole, the whole freaking thing. Um, just from a Pac-12 standpoint, this is the last year of the conference. USC, UCLA um, are leaving, you know, kind of kicked this off. But is is it realistic? Is this a Beavers team that you think could could uh, deliver that for Dan Wetzel and those who are, are embracing the spirit that he has put out there? Well, we've been kicking that around for months, and and – yeah, I mean, could they get could they get the CFP? Absolutely, they could. I mean, the odds are they're not because only four teams get there, and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of roads to travel before you get there. But the schedule is is doable. the 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 offense looks like it's going to be better. The, you know, I guess you can trust in Trent Bray putting the defense back together that was the best in the Pac-12. You know they have a few missing pieces that they got to figure out, but you know the schedule sets up well, and they don't play USC, and they play all their tough, most of their tough games at home except for Oregon. If you just go through the schedule, I mean I, I've said this before. You go through the schedule, I think they're going to be favored in their first ten games. If if you know if if they win, you know if they win, as weeks go by, if they keep winning, they're going to be keep being favored till they get to Washington. And who's to say they won't be favored in that game? Because um, Washington will be coming off a just a horrible stretch where they got to play SC and Utah back to back before they play Oregon State. Well, I mean, likelihood they're not going to sweep those two. So, I, I mean, Oregon State might be favored in every game this year except the Oregon game, and then you know let's see what happens with Oregon. But yeah, I mean they'll have to be twelve and zero to get to get to a. They'll have to be thirteen and zero to get to a CFP. But it's not impossible. It could happen. It just it, 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 they're going to need a lot of breaks. It would but everything, be. but it sets uh, it sets up for it at least. There's a possibility. Yeah, you're does. not you're not saying you, you're not you're not saying. Well, they could be twelve and zero if they win at Utah, if they win at USC. You know, if they they don't have to do that this year. They they don't have they don't have to play those teams on, on the road, and they don't have to play USC at all. So um, potentially until the Pac twelve championship, right? Game. Until the Pac twelve uh, yeah. championship, which I mean, we've already booked our tickets to that one, haven't we, Nick? Sure, yeah, and, and you know, Oregon State <laughs> in Vegas is is money. You know, they're one they're 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 one and zero in in Vegas, so. No, I, I'm, I mean, I'm trying stadiums. to remember. I'm trying to remember what the um the they've, there's something like they've won or they've covered at home their last twelve game, home games or something like that or for two straight years they've covered against the spread at Reeser Stadium, um which is um I don't recall I don't recall what the I know they're I mean eleven and one straight up but I don't I can't recall what they are um um. Well, the, it, 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 it get, the only loss was USC, and they covered the spread in that game. So right. it's just uh, speaking of research. Well, I've, I, I want to. Okay, so I, I have two things. I want to hear what the the what you've seen of the new um, 
of the new stadium expansion, because if, if Beaver fans are listening, there's going to be a lot of excitement about that. Certainly a bittersweet unveiling for the Beavers to have sort of this, you know, this sort of an announcement of their, you know, basically putting a big time college football stadium together finally after all these years, only to be potentially knocked out of big time college football. Uh, but how has that looked uh, from 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 what you've seen? And have have you been inside all the? Well, and, and for, un, un, unfortunately, if we were to do this this podcast tomorrow tomorrow night, I will I will have seen everything because there's they're doing a a media tour research on Tuesday after practice, so I will have seen everything. Now I have not been inside the stadium in quite a while because they they are not letting anybody in there pretty much right now they're starting to now, but they, they hadn't for a while. Um, but I mean, it looks pretty nice. And I, I'm, I'm curious to see what Beaver street looks like, what the luxury, um, the premium seats look like, what, well, what the press box looks like. Um, they keep telling me, well, you're going to pick out your seat in the press box. Well, you, you really think I get that choice? Um, yeah, I mean it's gonna be it's it's gonna be sweet. I mean it's I, I want to see all I I want to see what the concessions you know all all the different concessions they're gonna have there. Those are all supposed to be nice with the you know the they're getting breweries involved and some you know a lot of local restaurants and things like that. I mean it's gonna be I think fans are just gonna be blown away when they when they go when they go in there and there's gonna be a a a, a sneak preview on august 19th on sunday august no excuse me saturday august 18th they're doing a sneak preview um at reeser with fans from 11 to 1 where they can come in you know find their seats maybe switch seats if if the sweet seats are available they'll get to sample food they'll get to you know see they'll, they'll get to see what it's like before and they're kind of doing that as a, as a dry run you know, before the, the, the home opener three weeks after that. So I, I'm, yeah, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to see research for me in the next several weeks. It really is just profoundly bittersweet that Oregon state <laughs> is at this moment in its history where they seem to have as much on field momentum with the football program as ever, um, you know, sustainable momentum, with Jonathan Smith and, you know, what he's built and has gotten better every single year. You know, he's the guy who seems like, you know, he'd stay at Oregon state forever if they could afford him. Um, you know, really seems like it was building up for a long-term, you know, cons- run of consistency as, as a competent PAC 12 team, which, I mean, we all know where the Beavers were five, six years ago. It's been a remarkable turnaround. And to get to this point, to get the investment to, to renovate research stadium, to you know, add the video board and everything that you know has kind of helped transform that that stadium, and to get to this point, you're about to roll it all out. You got the biggest you know transfer player in program history coming in. That may not well from a division from a division one standpoint and from a um, a recruiting standpoint, nobody's ever been bigger than than DJ. And all that all that arrives at this confluence of events in Corvallis. And bam, the beavers get left for dead. I mean, it's just an unbelievable, um, cruel twist of irony. No, it's like, uh, I mean, it's 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 like falling in a mud puddle and then having a bus run over you. It's, <laughs> I mean, it, I I can't think of something. I'm it's it, it, no, it's like it's like it's compared. like bending it's it's bending over to pick up a hundred dollar bill, and. And getting run over by a bus as you, as you're like a yeah. hundred bucks, wham. Yeah. 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 I mean, and you know, it's hard to know how, how it's impacting the players. You know, they've been asked, I can't tell from practice. They, they look like they're lively. They look like they're having a good time. They, it's just impossible to tell some, you know, I, I've, I've read some places where where some some of the website people have said, "Oh, they were flat on Friday." I didn't see that, but I don't know what that means. It's just hard to know. But surely it's got to affect them to some degree, and maybe they can block that out for three months. And if you get off to a good start, I mean that's the key. If they can get off to a good start, none of this is going to matter. 
this is going to be the, well, I better not use that term, but you know, the something, the world tour, um, you know, if they get duck, up to a good duck, start. duck, duck, the world. Well, I was thinking of an F word, but, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, fool the world. It, yeah, yeah. Fool the world. Right. Um, I mean, so what you don't want to do with this team is get off to a bad start because that's when things could really snowball and, and, and go in the, go in the toilet. But even, but, but we were talking about, you know, holding on to Jonathan, I mean, maybe he's one of these guys, and and at some point I'm going to talk to him about all this. Just it's it's hard right now because he needs to focus on the season. I get it. And at some point, I'm hoping I can talk to him about you know what what the future might look like for him. But I mean, maybe he's one of these guys that go, you know, I got a contract. I'm making good money. I love Corvallis. My kids are happy here. You know, let's see what I can do with this. What what I can do with this. Um, this program in, in the mountain West. And it's not like, you know, it's not like you can drop down to a lower level of player and succeed in that league. As we've seen playing Boise state, Fresno state schools like that. I mean, they're every bit as good as Oregon state, even when Oregon state's good. So it's, it, it's going to be you, difficult. I mean, maybe Oregon state's most thrilling game last year. Well, there were some doozies last year, really fun season for Oregon state last year. But I mean, I mean, how does it get any better than the game we saw at, at Fresno State? You and I were both right. there, packed, packed house at, you know, at, at in Fresno. I mean, amazing game that comes down to the final play. Jack Coletto on fourth day. I mean, just it's as good. It's as good as it gets. And, you know, that's the Mountain West. And the Mountain West Conference is not a bad football league. And I will tell you, I actually have, I have, a, I have a really good friend who is a uh, is a is a, a Beaver alum. And he texted me yesterday and he, I thought he had maybe the healthiest perspective on this I've heard from Beaver fans, which was, he said, the thing that makes me okay with it is that I've watched football played in minor conferences and it wasn't any less fun. So worst case scenario is that the Beavs get downgraded to the Mountain West Conference and I still get to watch them play against some pretty good teams. And unlike a bunch of other schools in this stupid as, I think what you were going to say earlier, realignment, they're most, like, they're most likely in a very regional conference, which is best for all the other student athletes. I think all that's true. But I think what's lost is sort of the, you know, the, 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 the doorstep to potential greatness. It's going to be a lot harder to, you know, we saw Oregon State make a Fiesta Bowl and finish the season ranked fourth overall. We've seen the Beavers in modern times come oh so close to the Rose Bowl. You know, that is a different stratosphere of college football. And the Beavers showed that it could be done or almost could be done and but they needed the little bit of a boost that the Pac-12 gave, and I think that it just becomes harder to see them reaching those heights from from like a Mountain West. But you've made the point on Twitter, Nick, and 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 I'm going to wrap it up here. You've made the point that the Beavers, you know, potentially if they do end up in a conference that retains its A5 qualification or becomes a powerhouse at the Mountain West level, you know could have an easier path to the CFP than Oregon in the big 10, because we know what a gauntlet that is. So maybe it's not inconceivable that when all is said and done and with the benefit of hindsight, that Oregon state is at least in an okay place with a, with a puncher's chance at, 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 at getting to new New year's day. Right. And if you get in the mountain West, as we've seen over the years, some of these group of five leagues, they turn out surprises. Coastal Carolina, Central Florida, Boise State. It can be done. It's just for Oregon State. They're going to have to figure out none of the what those schools didn't have to do is figure out how to go from a hundred million dollar budget to a sixty million dollar budget. They were playing. They were always playing, you know, at, at a lower level, and so they they were working with that all along. Oregon State's going to have to figure out how they live in that world. And that's going to be difficult, but if they can do it, there's still possibility out there that, you know, if they can retain what they've, most of what they've got, I mean, they can, they can definitely win and thrive in the mountain West. They, they can, but, and I, like you said, they do have, I mean, they have fun in Fresno state and, 
Boise State and Colorado State. They have fun in all those places. Nevada, I went to the Nevada Oregon State game, you know, in 2019. Shoot, place was packed. It was it was it was fun. I mean, it went down to the last it went down to the last kick of the game. I mean, the games will still be fun. They just they're just not going to be it's not going to be Oregon. You yeah. know, the focus in the state is going to is going to look at Oregon because of the, because they're going to be playing in that prestigious big 10 league. So that will, that will be a challenge too for Oregon state is how do they, how do they get into the conversation? Well, we will keep having that conversation, Nick, you and I uh, both probably on, po- on the podcast and in the pages of the Oregonian and Oregon live. Uh, Nick, you do an incredible job covering the Beavers, and I, I tweeted this, and I'll, I'll say it again here. I think you had the only exclusive one-on-one interview with a sitting Pac-12 athletic director on the day of, of that everything fell apart. You sat down with um, with Scott Barnes, the Oregon State athletic director, which is a remarkable uh, get in the in the journalism world, and it certainly served our readers. It's a great story um, where Scott Barnes did not hide his anger and just one of the many great stories that you give our readers uh, from that beat in Corvallis. So we look forward to following along and, um, and seeing what comes next for Oregon state. Nick, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. I'd like to thank Nick Daschle for joining me on sports by Northwest. And we'll be back in the future with more conversations about the ducks, the beavers, the blazers, and all the sports that are relevant to you, the readers of the Oregon and Oregon Live. I'm Bill Orem. Thank you for listening.